Changemakers podcast, where we share tips, insight, tools, and stories from other changemakers designed to motivate you to become the change you want to see in your world. Make sure you join our Changemakers community at derunamahus.com forward slash podcast. And now it is time for you to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Ulala. Another Changemakers podcast interview that I'm going to share with you today with Keisha Mays, the successful serial entrepreneur, visionary, a global business development strategist, angel investor, philanthropist, and so much more. Her primary focus is on helping to develop more successful multi-million dollar global female-owned businesses through her international company, Just Fearless. She always pays it forward by supporting nonprofits worldwide that specifically support and empower women and girls. I've known Keisha for some years, and I know that she and her team, they have partnered with everything from Fortune 500s like Pepsi to global businesses like Virgin to startups and variety of industry for global business development strategies and international campaigns. She has been featured in the Business Insider, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Fast Company, and Forbes, just to name a few. She released her best-selling book, From Failure to Fearless, Still Completely Flawed but Thriving Fearlessly. I just love that title. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I got a rave reviews on Amazon. Uh, Now, most people, successful people, only talk about the good parts in the journey, but that's that's something that she doesn't do in in her book, From Failure to Fearless. I think I can go on and on about Keisha and what she's doing and who is influencing her and how fabulous she is. What I just, I get goosebumps thinking about how fearless she is. And that's what I really want to go into today because the change makers, we are all about supporting organizations to create magnetic company cultures. And in order to be able to do that and to make any change, Fear is probably something that most of us are facing. So welcome, Keisha, from the west Thank coast you. of the U.S. to <laughs> me here in Iceland. And I know that I got you up bright, at bright and early, probably not even daytime there. But <laughs> thank you for, for being with us on this Changemakers podcast. Thank you for having me, Muna. I have to drill immediately into what I, I mean, the question is burning on my own lips is Keisha tell me what happened in your life that made you fearless oh it's something I think innate because I think you know if you if you look at my my background it's the you know growing up with the single parents and you kind of have like grow up faster than normal and then you know just different obstacles I don't want to call them you know heartaches or you know painful memories I like to say lessons learned different obstacles whatever's happened made me be willing to take chances I feel like at this point you know I've got nothing to lose so the worst that could happen is if you know it doesn't go the way I planned but at least I tried so that mindset has been with me since I was in probably my late early teens I've always wanted to try something you know I'm like and then people just started my company called Just Fearless and people just tell me you are so fearless you'll try anything like who moves to Hong Kong and start a company? I mean, who does that? And you know what I mean? I did. So. Yeah. yeah. So it's really coming just from you. And that's, that sounds like, that sounds like you decided somewhere down the line that you were going to be fearless. You were not going to let things stop you. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So in your journey, going from failure to fearless, what have been the, the biggest obstacles that you had to face? Oh man, I, I have to talk about some of those those lessons learned uh, in my mm. book. You know, yeah. for my ability to be able to try stuff. I mean, I, I'll try, but it, it's like sometimes you still have to crawl before you walk. Mm. And I would try to like start running before I even learn how to crawl. And so I would see things, or it, I would see things not go the way I planned because I didn't maybe plan it properly or. I would not listen to my intuition, that gut feeling that we all get. It's not just me. We all get it. Mm-hmm. And it's that thing that says, I knew I shouldn't have done that. And then you do it anyway. 
<laughs> and it's just oh, like it blows up in your face. And it's just, it's been, you know, just from my, when my when I finally thought that I had made it in New York, in New York City, and I, you know, doing events that were raising money for women's charities. And then I had this big conference where I, you know, had at the time, almost 10 years ago, it was this big conference I put together, a three-day conference. Mind you, I've never, never done a conference before. For some reason, I thought three days was a good day, good way to start, right? And then, <laughs> <laughs> I've never done it before, but I thought three days was good to start with. Huh. So I had this big event where I, you know, I booked Susie Orman, Jillian Michaels. I don't know if you're familiar with these ladies. And, you know, to honor Patty LaBelle, do you know it fell apart the last week, the week of the event, and I had to cancel everything. And I went, you know, negative six figures in the hole. It was like almost bankruptcy and almost getting sued by Susie Orman and Jillian Michaels. And, you know, my, rep- my rep- reputation took a hit, a massive hit. Wow. And so moments like that were just like, you know, you, the first three days you cry. Like, I, I'm like, I'm not going to front. I cry. So I was just like, I cannot believe because it was so public. It wasn't like it was just, you know, a private thing. It was a very public thing. And I worked too hard to get to that point just to see it all fall apart. So watching that blow up in my face, being like highly in debt and then just, you know, facing potential lawsuits. Thankfully they didn't sue me. They could have they had every right mm-hmm. to. And just, watching that and then still maybe like five months later figuring out a way to pick it back up and do it on a smaller scale like i should have done from the beginning you know a one day event you know at a smaller venue and just doing it on a much smaller scale and i still got it done so Mm -hmm. it it was done just on a local local scale much smaller in new jersey instead of new york it just you know the moments like that where it's just like it shows what you're made of like are you gonna sit here and cry just give up are you gonna you know get that moment get that emotion out let it out and then get back on your feet and do the damn. Yeah, I'm not. I probably it, shouldn't have said that, but you know what I'm. <laughs> do yeah, your thing. <laughs> yeah, just do your thing. Exactly. Yes. So, that sounds to me like there was a deeper purpose to what you're doing. So you didn't go and just crawl into bed and just you're still in bed. You would still be in bed, and that would be a <laughs> choice. But you yes. you did decide to stand up and and go for it. Can you share with me? What is the big purpose for you? Why are you doing this? I've always loved working with women. I've known it since I was probably, probably between 19 and 20. I used to volunteer at this organization called the Houston Area Women's Center for Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault. I knew then for my, you know, probably, I would say five years of volunteering there, that I had a gift. Because women would just tell me, like, working with them when I was on the hotline, talking to women who were in domestic violence situations, or I would go to, like, the hospital when they had like a reported a rape and they needed a sexual assault advocate to be with the victim, the rape tip is very invasive. And I would go sit with them and be able to like calm them. I don't care what time of the morning or night it was, I'd go. I was on call at night. And it just, I knew then that like I had a gift and to work with women and my, my, my purpose was to empower them. Now I didn't know how it was going to work. Cause I, 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 even though I loved that I was able to have an impact, I knew I couldn't do that line of work for years, but that was too, too much emotionally for me. Like it was too, too much but I knew I had to work with women. So it started then and it just kind of evolved into like, you know, so raising funds for women's charities or going into, you know, doing conferences and then going into business development, helping women to scale into new markets. And then now we're doing the angel fund and, you know, it's just all these different things where my goal here is to really see women win and really see, like, I think Iceland is a model that I wish more countries would follow, including my own. Like it's just very progressive. I mean, it's like we, if there's actual gender equality there where we're here, we're still fighting for it all these years later. Mm, and we're yeah. supposed to be a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> but you bring out the superpower with, from the, within, don't you? Yes. I mean, I think we all have that Wonder Woman in us. Like, I love that, mm. that movie, but I think we all have that. I think it's just really tapping into it. Like, you know, again, taking a chance on yourself. At the bottom line, no one's going to believe in you the way you believe in yourself. So I, I don't depend on anybody else to believe in me or give me a pat on the back. It's just kind of like I have to really believe in myself, even when things are still, even now, where I'm in a different position than I was 10 years ago. Mm. Things don't always go as I want them to, but. I still have to give myself that, you know, that pat on the back or that pep talk of like, hey, you know, we can do this thing. Let's, let's make it happen. Like it's, so what if it's never been done before? Just do it. Just do <laughs> it. Right? Just go Just for it. it. Just do it. Yeah. And you, so you're working with women-owned businesses worldwide. I mean, like I know you, you, you have your offices on various locations all over the world. Uh-huh. And, and, and so you, you, you're going 
from one place to another and you're you're sharing your knowledge and, and I know as well that you have even created a huge angel investment fund that is mm -hmm. supposed to be uh, specifically funding women-owned projects or women-owned yes. companies businesses. with yes. businesses which I think is absolutely fantastic what do you see as because I know you're working so so cross-culturally in everything you do what do you see on in general the obstacles women leaders business leaders are facing to become fearless like I think I heard stories and I've encountered this myself for sometimes they're the only woman in the room so sometimes you know you get mansplained when you're trying oh, to gosh. talk or <laughs> And then you try your best to be like, you try your best to be a professional and not like really <laughs> like, you know, let, you know, take what, they, what we like to call it, taking the Jesus moment, like you mm. try not to go there. Mm. But I, you know, it's moments like that where you're the, you're the only one with a seat at the table. Mm. And it's like, you want to, you don't want to be emotional. You want to show that, you know, you're supposed to be here or maybe, you know, or maybe it's the, the society's rules on us. Like at least again, I, I can speak for the U.S. I can there are other countries far more progressive than we are. But for the U.S. society's rules of what a woman should do and what her place should be, and even when she breaks through that glass ceiling, as we've seen, sometimes it's just not enough. Even at our, you know, our last elections, and I'm not trying to get political here, but even when we, we're right there at that glass ceiling, and still it's just not enough. So I think when you look at that, sometimes it can be discouraging to think, well, she was a lady at Hillary Clinton and was at the mm -hmm. prime spot to break a glass ceiling, and it's still which is not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it can be discouraging for some who might, you know, dare to step out of their comfort zone. And then when they get shut down by, by whomever, mm -hmm. it can be discouraging. Even with the, my God, there's so much in the news today in the U.S., like, you know, the Me Too, you know, mm -hmm. campaign for women that have been, you know, assaulted. And it's just like those moments where they try to be fearless and it's, they get shut down or something happens. Or their career gets ruined if they speak up. Mm. Where is the line? Yeah, where is the line? I, I had a, in a, one of our podcasts with Dr. Andrea Pennington, we were discussing the whole thing about Me Too from the standpoint of this Me Too is Me Too taking away our, our right to be sensual. Mm -hmm. um, it was very interesting but mm -hmm. because, you know, according to Dr. Andrea Pennington, she absolutely feels that. Uh, both men and women should continue to be essential in everything mm -hmm. that we are and, and show up as essential human being. Like you're saying, the question is, where do we draw the line? And we have to, as individuals, to draw the mm -hmm. line first. And and then we talked a whole lot about this. And it seems to be what you're just saying as well. I'm thinking about that from that standpoint that you were just focus, putting the focus on. The whole thing about conversation and having mm -hmm. a conversation and when you yes. are talking to women business owners uh, that uh, you're helping them to fund their business and grow their businesses and getting them out there, mm -hmm. um, how, uh, what do you see as, you know, now I'm guessing that you basically get to them instantly. Mm -hmm. Where do you see what type of women are managing and then able to go all the way in, in, in their business and really the ones who are willing to take a chance on themselves. Because even now with this angel fund and we're getting the word out and we're, yeah. you know, doing a grassroots approach, there are still women who either overthink it or doubt themselves or doubt like, you know, if they should apply yeah. or they overthink it or wait to the last minute. Take a chance on yourself. Like no one else is going to do this but you. I mean, people might open a door for you, but it's only because you took a chance on yourself that they open that door for you. So I feel like be willing to... Like, I mean, it's so cliche, but step out of your comfort zone. Like, that's really what it boils down to. If there's an opportunity before you, don't do the self-doubt talk. You know, take a chance. What have you got to lose? Worst they could say is no. Okay, well, we're not the only angel fund. We say no, we're not the only one. You know, and we're not the only, there are others that are geared toward women. They're not the only one. So it's like, take a chance. Like, don't overthink it. Just, just do it. I mean, I, I live by that at this point. Like, just do it. Yes, do it. I love yes. that. I think from that and just one final question, because I know you are on the move. Mm -hmm. For you, Keisha, where do you want to see yourself five years from now? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. She's putting it out there. Oh, my God. Do I dare tell? I never really say like what the what my ultimate dreams are. But uh, this is your opportunity nice. to put yeah. it out there in the cosmos, darling. 
<laughs> five years from now. So we're at 2018 mm. pretty much. So mm. that'll be 2023 or 2020, 2023, if not yeah. 22, something yeah. like that. Anyhow, yeah. I did my goal. One is 1 million uh, funded entrepreneurs generating at least 1 million in revenue by December 31st, 2025, a slightly past yeah. five years. So that's important. Two, two things is for just fearless to become what Virgin is for the world. Virgin is like, you know, this massive Ooh, company. I like that. Yeah, it's in different in every industry, you know, Virgin Records, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Airlines, they're all over. I want Just Fearless to be similar to that, where it's a known brand around the world. So <laughs> those two things are what I'm working toward. And that will also help me to fund. I'm not saying I have to self-fund these one million women, but I'm starting off with my own funds to set up a track record. But to grow and to beyond go grow beyond that, like it's gonna take massive funds. So I need to do massive business. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> listeners to the Chainsmakers podcast, we've just been talking to the CEO of uh, Just Fearless, who is the same level as a virgin. So it's going to be Keisha Mays and Dr. Richard Branson are going to be companions. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm, I'm envisioning this with you, Keisha. And I know our audience will do that too. I like bold people who are willing to make the change that they want to see in their world so that their yes. dreams can come true. So Keisha, from that note, thank you so much for being part thank of this Thank you for having me. Uh, we are with you on this one. Thank it's you. A, it's bless bless from me in Iceland. Until next time, we have another episode of the James Mavis Podcast. your generous review on iTunes, Stitzer or Spotify. And remember, you can always go to runamagnus.com and find out more about the change makers and how we can help you driving the change you want to see in your world.